Good evening. We begin with breaking news tonight. Two people are shot at a local apartment. It happened about two hours ago on Penwood. That's near Arville. And that's where we find News 3's Paul Matadine. Paul, what can you tell us so far? Yeah, well, the funny thing is I got out here and kids actually told me what was going on because many of them were playing on the street as they heard gunshots ring out. We are told that the gunshots to these kids sounded like fireworks, but you can see here that investigators are still on the scene trying to figure out exactly what happened. Here's what they told us so far. Police tell us at about 9 o'clock, two men were walking down the street here on Penwood Avenue. They got into some kind of argument with three other guys at a house on this road. That's when shots rang out. Police tell us two people were hit, and now one man is in custody. Police tell us that known gang members were involved in this shooting, and the two individuals that were hit, they have been taken to UMC. We're told that one of them was shot in the chest, one in the shoulder, but only one tonight is in the hospital with non, I should say, with life-threatening gunshot injuries. For now, we're live here near Sohara and Decatur. Paul Matady and Jessica, back to you. Okay, Paul, so we know two people shot. One, you said, in the chest. I'm assuming he's the one with the life-threatening injuries, and police are telling you... Yes gun uh, gang activity rather involved. Thank you, Paul. We'll continue to stay on top of the story overnight. Wake up with the Wagners tomorrow morning for the most up-to-date information in this double shooting. A 23-year-old man is shot and killed by Metro Police after what started out as just a domestic dispute with his mom. It happened early this morning near Buffalo and Westcliff. Family members say the victim, Ralphie Olivas, got into an argument with his mom that escalated out of control. When police got there, they say Olivas was walking toward them holding a butcher knife Officers tried to stop him using non-lethal force, but they say they had no choice but to fire a gun. Olivas was taken to Summerlin Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. New tonight, several people forced out of their home by fire. Flames ripped through the garage at a home on Streamside Avenue. That's near Alexander and the 215. Investigators say a car parked in the garage somehow caught fire. Fortunately, everyone inside the home was able to get out safely. Damages, however, are estimated at about $100,000. Hundreds of pounds of methamphetamine worth millions of dollars seized here in the valley in what turned out to be the biggest meth bust in state history. You're looking at 208 pounds of meth found in five different houses throughout the valley. The Southern Nevada Drug Task Force also confiscated five guns, one shotgun, four pounds of heroin, $280,000 in cash, and nine vehicles. Eleven people were arrested in the bust. Officials say ten of them were Mexican nationals living here illegally. Investigators are looking into the possibility that crimes are tied to the Mexican drug cartel. Organizations that are associated with the cartels obviously uh, are responsible for much of the transportation and the distribution within the United States. How closely associated with these, uh, this organization is with the cartel, we're still looking into that this time. The message from all the task forces, from all the Southern Nevada agencies who are involved in this, is that we don't want the drug dealers coming to town. To give you an idea of the magnitude of this bust, law enforcement telling us the amount of meth that was seized is enough to distribute yeah, to thousands of people across the valley and was worth more than $5.7 million. Of the 11 arrests, Metro sent us nine mugshots. We're told three of the people are from Henderson, three from Las Vegas, one is from California. We don't know where the other four suspects live as of right now. A health scare at the Aria Hotel. Guests may have been exposed to a bacteria that could lead to a severe form of pneumonia known as Legionnaire's disease. The Centers for Disease Control say six guests contracted the disease after staying at the hotel between June 21st and July 4th. A letter was sent to thousands of guests who stayed at the property during that time. Health officials say you can't get the disease from drinking water. Instead, you have to inhale a certain amount of water vapor or mist that contains that bacteria, for instance, from taking a shower. It has to multiply to the point where there's so much bacteria in the water that if people get exposed to it, that they'll actually get the disease. Officials with MGM Resorts say once they learned about the situation, they immediately began treating the water system for all 4,000 rooms at Aria. They say recent tests have shown no detectable levels of the bacteria. This isn't the first time Legionnaire's disease has been linked to a strip property. You might remember back in October of 2008, the disease was confirmed at the Polo Towers when four guests fell ill. The water was checked and treated. Also in September of 2001, several Legionnaire's cases were confirmed at the same property. 
Women from all around the country are here in Las Vegas competing for the title of Ms. United States. The pageant took place at the Orleans tonight. One of the contestants who couldn't be there was the reigning Ms. Nevada, Tracy Lynn Rogers. Rogers almost died three weeks ago when her car collided with a tour bus on I-15 near Moapa. She's at home tonight recovering, and her sister says she can barely move. She can't really turn her head, so her eyes just can go forward. We put a TV up almost on the ceiling so she can watch TV. We do our best to keep her occupied, and we visit a lot and talk a lot and laugh a lot. And, you know, she does her therapy she works hard at, which is, takes a lot of the day. Roger's family has hired a lawyer who is seeking damages. At last check, he has been in touch with an insurance company linked to that bus in the accident, but says he has not ruled out taking the case to court. The trial continues for a former Metro officer accused of causing a deadly crash during a police chase. Aaron Carpenter was back in court today. Prosecutors say Carpenter was told three times to break off that pursuit last May. Instead, his patrol car collided with the suspect's vehicle, sending it spinning into oncoming traffic and killing the driver, Ivan Carrillo. Detective Carl Tommaso interviewed the officer after the crash. Carpenter told him what happened was an accident. As the Honda began to accelerate, he made it very clear that the Honda had changed lanes and came into his lane where he believed the right front of the patrol vehicle made contact with the left rear of the Honda. You might remember that trial was put on hold for two months when one of the prosecutors got sick. Carpenter is charged with felony reckless driving and vehicular manslaughter. He has since been fired from the department. The girlfriend of a man suspected in the beating case outside Dodger Stadium is busted here in Las Vegas. Denise Pacone is being held in the Clark County Jail on drug trafficking and weapons charges. She's expected in court July 27th. L.A. police are calling her boyfriend, Giovanni Ramirez, the prime suspect in that March beating of a San Francisco Giants fan, Brian Stowe. Stowe is still in a San Francisco hospital with severe brain injuries. Ramirez has not been formally charged in the beating. He does remain in jail, however, on a parole violation. We now know that a bolt of lightning is what sparked that La Madre wildfire, which has been burning since Monday. The fire is still burning tonight, about three miles northwest of the 215 in Summerlin Parkway. Officials say lightning from a weakened storm ignited a small fire that smoldered for several days. Conditions on the mountain got so dry that eventually that fire sparked. The fire has burned around 45 acres, but firefighters say they're making progress and expect to have it under control any time. In what has turned out to be major election drama in North Las Vegas, Wade Wagner was supposed to be sworn in tonight on the city council. Instead, he'll have to wait. This after a judge issued a temporary restraining order preventing the city from giving Wagner an election certificate. Last week, another judge ordered the city to accept the results of the controversial election, which saw Wagner beat incumbent Richard Churchio by one vote. The results were called into question after the discovery of an improperly cast ballot. Wagner's attorney, Todd Bice, tells News 3 he's waiting to see what the city attorney does before deciding his next move. Good news for all of us who dread waiting in line at the DMV. We can all relate to that, right? Well, coming up, renew your license while picking up a few groceries. We'll tell you how it's possible, plus this. By the way, did you see I got a big plate of peas? Did you see that? And I ate all my peas. Peas have never gotten so much press. Republican presidential candidate Mitt Romney eating his vegetables. The message behind his comment at a town hall meeting. And another scare involving jets at a busy airport. Find out what caused these two planes to hit each other before they even took off. It is a big night for Harry Potter fans as we mark the end of a magical journey for the gang of Hogwarts. Hey, KJ. All right, Jessica, we have some unusual weather for July. In fact, it feels more like early June. Numbers we haven't seen in the afternoon this time of year in 10 years. But come on, it's Las Vegas. It can't last. Full forecast details are coming up.